Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome back to episode 4 of Kerbal Space Program. Now, if you remember in episode 3, we did a little bit of grinding. We ground some science -y stuff around um, the base here. And what that did was it allowed us to unlock a whole bunch of lovely things. Advanced rocketry, general construction, and basic science. All of these things are coming very, very handy now. Because, if we remember, back on the old contract situation... We have active escape the atmosphere and orbit Kerbin. Now, set altitude record of 70 kilometers. That will come naturally once we escape the atmosphere. So when we do one, we're going to do the other anyway. Uh, the same with the speed record. We won't have a problem smashing speed records once we get out the atmosphere and start orbiting Kerbin. You'll frequently see two, even 3,000 meters per second at that point. So what I propose to do is try and build a rocket that will take us up into um, above 70 kilometers and we'll orbit, we'll circularize our orbit, and then we'll come back down again and hopefully not kill anybody in the process. Now then, as I said in the last video, uh, the mods, the mods I use are in a mod spreadsheet. All of my gaming mods are in a mod spreadsheet, so if you see a mod here and you're thinking, what the heck is that? Uh, what does he use? Just have a look in the mod spreadsheet, there's a tab for KSP. Uh, one of the mods I've got is an image viewer, and if I press Alt-I, it will bring up these wonderful images. This one I basically nicked off the internet, and then you just drop it into a folder, and when you press Alt-I, it will show you the image. You can have more than one image, of course. What the heck is this? This is a Delta V map. Don't worry too much about most of this. Um, basically, what this shows you is how much Delta V you need to get around the solar system. Now, you're probably saying to me, Squirrel, what the heck is Delta V? All right, you know, what, what are we talking about Delta V? Well, I don't get too complicated, but simply put, let me get rid of that. Simply put, Delta V is like the currency, if you like. It's how much it's going to cost you to get around. Not in money, not in science, but in fuel, effectively. And because, you know, every time you make a movement, yeah, when you make a movement, you expend energy, you, you burn fuel. So if my rocket's flying along and I want to basically change direction, I'm going to have to burn some fuel to do it. And how much fuel I have to burn and how much I can move around depends on the mass of my craft. Yeah, how, how much mass it has. The more mass it has, the more it's going to take, more force it's going to take to move it into a different direction. And the amount that you can move it by is dictated by your fuel and how much thrust you can apply and how efficient the engine is. It's all very complicated stuff, but we can simplify it down by just saying it's delta. It's called delta v. It's how much how much currency you have to make movements to your craft, and it changes. It changes all the time as you start to leave the atmosphere, as you're burning fuel, when you experience different gravity uh, on different planets. It will change. Um, Without further ado, let's not get too complicated at this stage. It is meant to be fairly simple at the moment. All we need, now we could decide here, do we want to go manned or unmanned? Do we want to, you know, take a guy up there or not? I'm going to say manned. Uh, I'm going to click the crew icon here. I'm d we could take Jeb, we could take Valentin, we could take, we could take any of these two pilots if you want SAS, which is a stability enhancement. I'm going to take Jeb. I think Jeb should be the first person to actually leave the atmosphere and do an orbit so let's let's leave jeb in there now remember this thing is going going to come back down, back down to the atmosphere and not explode that's the plan so we're going to need something on top we're going to need a parachute of course which we now have so that's going to deploy and the only thing left is if this is the only re-entry craft that we have if this is the only thing that comes back then we need a heat shield and the heat shield is here, but I need to right click on it and purchase it because we're on moderate career mode. Now we've got the heat shield, we can whack that underneath there. So, as the craft re-enters the atmosphere, it's going very, very, very quickly as it's flying through space. And as it starts to hit the atmosphere at that speed, the atmosphere will start to slow it down. But, just like when you drag your hand rapidly across some rope, your hand gets very hot very, very quickly and it burns. Yeah, don't do it at home, kids. So when your craft starts to come back through the atmosphere, when you see meteors, you know, screaming across the sky, that's because they're basically experiencing re-entry. They're going so quickly, they're hitting the atmosphere, they, they experience like a fireball around them with the friction heat. And you need something like this to protect it. So you're going to see flames flying across the side here. 
But Jeb's going to be inside, all nice and cosy, going, yeah, what's the problem, dude? I'll be fine. I've got a heat shield. That's all he needs. And then when he's basically, the atmosphere has slowed him down, he's going to fall down, smash on the floor. He needs a parachute. The parachute's going to deploy and stop him hitting the ground too quickly. That's all it needs. That's what's going to come back. The big problem is actually getting it up there. <laughs> so what we need now is we need a separator, which is one of these, stack decoupler, like that. That gives us that bit of staging so that when we're ready to come back, we can detach ourselves away from whatever's left, hopefully not too much, and just that will come back. So we'll do our staging later. It's always best to do staging at the end. Now this is where we're going to have to start thinking about things, okay? We need something to basically get us up there, something to orbit or circularize. There are different ways of doing this, as I've said before. A lot of this is dictated by what we have available. Now, we have just unlocked the Terrier. If I right-click and unlock the Terrier, one second, you will see that the Terrier is just about the same size as this thing. But the Terrier is quite compact. And what the Terrier is really good for is getting around up in space. Yeah, it's quite a compact little thing. It's quite uh, quite nimble, quite frugal on the old fuel. And the reason it's particularly useful is because what you can do is you can get a fuel tank like this. We've now got a small fuel tank and a big fuel tank. I'm going to unlock that. So that's a normal fuel tank we have at the moment. And this is the big fuel tank. And if we hover over these, you'll see the amount of fuel is 180. The amount of fuel in that one is 90. So this is quite literally just two of those. Yeah, put that back. What we can do is we can do something like this and we can stick an engine on the bottom. This little thing, the Terrier. Now, that's great. Um, let's pretend for a minute that was up in the atmosphere. How long could it burn fuel for? How much speed could it pick up? If it was just sat there, not moving at all, and we full thrusted it, how quickly would it be f how quickly would it be going by the end by the time we'd run out of fuel how quickly would it be going that in essence is your delta v and the way that you you can work out what delta v you have is this wonderful thing here the kerbal engineering system this is a mod an extremely useful mod and what you need to do is not throw it away you need to put it put it inside your rocket somewhere and it doesn't really matter where it goes it's just going to be almost a hidden component uh, you can just plop it inside like that. You don't even know it's there. But that's going to give us wonderful calculations about Delta V and other wonderful, useful things. If we click down here, okay, the, the little spanner icon, K for Kerr, Kerr the, that one. This is the Kerbal Engineer. Kerbal Engineer Redux. Again, it's in the mod spreadsheet. The reason I just put that in there is because this information is always available when you're assembling the rocket. However, once you take off off the launch pad, the only way you're going to have any kind of information like this is if you've put that engineering module inside the rocket somewhere. It needs that, otherwise it can't get the information from the rocket because the information changes all the time. So it needs some component in there to sort of look at how much fuel it's got left, look at its mass and all, and do all the nasty calculations. In essence, this is the number you want to see here. Now, you can just go compact mode like that. So that keeps it simple. All right. What that's saying is stage two, which is the S2 here, stage naught, stage one, stage two. Stage two is where the engine is. Stage two, right, has a thrust to weight ratio, that's TWR, of 0.73. That's its thrust to weight ratio when it's full of fuel. As it's almost got no fuel left, it will have a thrust to weight ratio of 0.74. In other words, if this thing had no fuel left, in theory, it could push us at 0.74 thrust to weight ratio. Now, what the heck is that? The thrust to weight ratio is the relationship between how much force this thing can apply and, if you like, how heavy this thing is. Now, I use the word heavy. It doesn't really apply as such. Once you get out of gravity, it's all about mass, yeah? We think of weight as, you know, standing on some scales, like... You know, I weigh 100 kilograms or whatever, yeah? Or if you're American, I weigh 16 stones or whatever it is. That's your weight. But the only reason you have weight is because you have mass, which is what you're made of, and the Earth's gravity is pulling you down. That is why you have weight. We're in space when there's no gravity, if you like, you know, pulling you. Once you escape the planet, 
<clears throat> and there's no gravitational forces pulling you, you don't weigh anything as such. You've just got mass. And if you want to move that mass, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to move that mass, you need to apply force. And the thrust to weight ratio says that essentially if you're stood over if you're over there on the launch pad and you've got a thrust to weight ratio of anything less than equal to one, you will not take off. You need something like 1.5 thrust to weight ratio to get off the ground. You need enough force to be able to push this against the gravity, against the force of gravity, which is equal to one, if you like, coming back the other way. You're pushing against that. So the thrust to weight ratio, when you're taking off, this needs to be about 1.5 upwards. Otherwise, you'll never get off the, the launch pad. This is the delta V, 569 delta V. That's saying how much currency, if you like, we've got to spend in space. Now, it depends on how we're going to design our rocket, but let me show you something here. Five, let's say that's 570. If I put another fuel tank on here, identical fuel tank, what do you think the thrust to weight will be now on the Delta V? You might be thinking to yourself, it should double from 570, it should be now what, 1,040? Not the case, not the case, because what you're doing is you've added a lot of mass, you've doubled the mass here of the fuel, and so anything that you're burning here has to move all of that around as well as all this around, right? So instead of it being double 570, it's probably an extra 50%, if that. And it gets worse. It's a diminishing thing. You can't just stick more fuel tanks on here and expect to go twice as far. It doesn't work that way. All the fuel you burn now has to move all the other fuel around, all the other mass. So this is what rocketry is all about. It's all about working out things that work. Now that, as it stands, that as it stands in theory, if we can get this thing up to near, like going towards 70K, that should be enough to fuel, to circularize itself, no problem, and deorbit itself, no problem at all. We just need to get that up there. And so this is going to, the next stage we're gonna build is gonna be our launch stage, okay? What I need next is another stack decoupler. Now, as I've said before with Kerbal, you do have to experiment. There is no right or wrong way of doing something. There's just stuff that works and stuff that doesn't work. And mostly stuff doesn't work. Yeah? So you have to play with it. You have to try it out. You go for a launch and you see what happens. And then you change your rocket design. And that's what I'm going to do. So I've now got this situation here. If I click on the command pod and move it up with the scroll wheel, Scroll back down, I now have some space for some more fuel tanks. Now, this is where, because this is the launch stage, okay? This is where you want the biggest bang, for. this is where you want the most thrust, like your biggest engine that you've got. And pretty much that happens to be the Reliance. Now, the downside with the Reliance is it has no thrust vectoring, which means I can't control my craft easily. As I'm taking off, if I use a swivel engine, yeah? I can steer it, it vectors thrust. In other words, there's some movement in the way it's pointing. It can sort of, instead of just pointing straight down, it can, we can make it point slightly left, point to the right. You know what I mean? You can steer effectively. It's got to be a, like, a bit like a rudder. You can kind of turn the rudder slightly by a few degrees and vector the thrust. And you can tell that because it says on it, gimbal, vectoring range, three degrees. So it has some gimbling. This one has more power, but only in a straight line. So which one do you go for? Well, again, there's no right answer. There's only a choice. If we go for this, we get less power, but we can steer it. Do we need to steer it is the question, because if we don't, we can just use a straight line. Well, we do need to steer it, but there are other ways of steering the rocket. The ways of steering the rocket are not this. This is a lifting fin. This will keep you going in a straight line, as will this one. However, nope, we don't have it. Basically, we don't have it unlocked. We don't have control surfaces. If we have something which is a control surface, we can have a fin here which moves, and that will allow us to steer it. We don't have that. So if we don't have vectoring, we're going to have a really tough time steering. Answers the question, we need a vectored engine. So we put a vectored engine on the bottom. Now, look. Look what we get now. We get a stage 4, 1.18 thrust-to-weight ratio. Remember what I said to you? You're going to be looking at at least 1.5 to get off the ground. That ain't going to get off the ground. Even worse than that, the Delta V is 1400. Now, we need approximately 
four and a half thousand delta V to get out of the atmosphere, approximately. At the moment, we've got 1400 plus 800, but don't forget we need some of that to circularize our orbit. I'm sorry for going a little bit too quickly at the moment, there's a lot to take in right now, but trust me, it'll start to make sense when we take off and you see this stuff burn out, all right? So what we're going to need is we're going to need some assistance. Now this is where things like solid rocket boosters come in handy. This is what they were made for, effectively. Solid rocket boosters are, as I've said before, something that you light the, 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 light the touch paper on and then that's it. They're burning at 100%. You can't stop them. The upside of a solid rocket booster is it's very, very efficient. It puts out a very good thrust to weight ratio long enough to get you going, to get you in the first, say, 10k of the atmosphere. That's where it hurts the most in terms of the fuel you burn. And these things will help you to get going. It's no surprise if you remember the Challenger rocket and that kind of thing. It had two solid rocket boosters down the side. As it got higher into the atmosphere, as it got to about 18,000 meters or something, it would detach those away. And then the main rocket would, would carry on pushing it up. But the solid rocket boosters are a, la a launch assist. They get all of this mass up. That's what they do. So they're very useful. Now we've got this one, which we haven't unlocked yet, and this one. Uh, this one is... We need to right-click on that. Actually, I think we need this one. The thumper. Um, let me just have a look at the thumper a second. Uh, solid fuel, amount 600 of fuel. This one's got an amount of 300. So we're probably going to unlock this for 3,000. Okay. Now, we could just stick two of these on the side and think, yep, jobs are good. Un. But when you've used something, ideally you want to throw it back down again. And any part that we can recover, we can get the money back from. If, it, if we just allow it to drop into the ground, explode, we won't get any money back for it. So we want to be efficient. And I think we've unlocked a decoupler, if I remember rightly. Do we unlock a decoupler? Structural... Yes, the radial decoupler. So if we click that, unlock it, this is what we're going to need. We're going to need to put some of these on, maybe about, I don't know, here-ish. Actually, let's take that off. Press X, because we want two of them, one on either side. Yep. And then we go back to our solid fuel booster, and if we just highlight it like this, there you go. Now it's starting to look like an engine. Now, the, da the danger is that the exhaust gas coming out of this hits that, all right? That can be a real problem. So let's just click our decoupler, and we'll just move it down a little bit like that. It's easier if you do it this way. Use the decoupler. There you go. All right? So now all the exhaust gases coming out of here are not going to damage any of the other components. Remember, that's given us some extra staging. We'll worry about that later. One thing we do need is another thing that we unlocked, which should be under aerodynamic. Here it is. Right click, purchase, get that nose cone on here. Kerbal Space now has aerodynamics, which are, you know, that's going to increase drag if we don't put those on there. And drag is very, very important while we're trying to get out the atmosphere. You know, it's no surprise that uh, if you stick your hand out the car window when you're doing 50 miles an hour, you'll feel that force. It's pretty strong. Imagine what we're doing when we're starting to accelerate at 200 miles per hour. Yeah? Every bit of aerodynamics really does hold you back. We want this thing to come back, as I said, so we're going to need some parachutes on this thing. Um, if we go back to utility, we've got radials, and we've also got these parachutes here. Now, in theory... You could do this, but in practice, we don't have big... You can get bigger parachutes, but we don't have them yet, you see? So we have to do that, and then we have to unlock the radial parachute and put this on the side here. Now, if I press X again... Oh, we've got two already, we're fine. So one there, and it puts one over that side, and then we do the same thing here. There you go. That will be plenty. Two of those things will basically bring one of those back gently down to the surface and it won't explode. And we'll be able to recover it, which is cool. So, how are we doing on Delta V and stuff? That's the question. Well, if you look at this, we've got three stages. And you may be thinking, hang on, why have we got three stages? Surely we want to burn all of these at the same time? And the answer is yes, we do. 
So what we need to do is put stage 4 and 6 together. Now stage 6 is the solid rocket booster and stage 4 is the main engine. So we'll drag that down into 6. Now we've got all the same thing. That's now stage 5 and if you look at the thrust to weight ratio now it's on 2.7 which is huge. 2.7 is absolutely huge. What that means is we can back off on our main fuel. We can basically not burn the fuel in this bit. We can we can thrust right down and just let the SRBs take us off the launch pad. As soon as they're about to burn out, we fire up the main engine, let them go, and off we go in a straight line. Now this rocket is very, very tall. In fact, it may be too tall. Things this tall and thin tend to get stability issues. So the other thing we want to look at is putting some winglets on here. Now that has a lifting surface of 0.12. You see that number here this one has a lifting surface of 0.37 it's pretty much three times as better in terms of keeping things in a straight line so we're going to go for that one all right so i'm going to put two of those and you could even press x and go for three if you want to so we put one like here as long as they're not touching which they are so we can't do that the other option is to go four but that makes the rocket more expensive. It'll be stable, but it will be more expensive because these things may not make it back down without exploding. Which reminds me, are we going to salvage this? Well, it depends what at what level we're at in the atmosphere. If we're outside of like 60 or something like that, it may not survive. But it's worth giving her a shot and seeing if we can. So, a couple of parachutes maybe, one on each side might be enough to salvage that thing so when we detach this section here maybe we'll get some of that back maybe again it's an experiment we will only find out really by doing the rest of it here this we've not got a hope of getting this back the reason being um by the time we're using this section here we'll be well above the atmosphere we'll be on 60 70 thousand meters and when it falls back down again you know, the chances of getting any of that back are fairly close to non-existent. It will just fall back down and smash. But it's only a couple of empty fuel cans, so it's not so bad. Now, we're approaching the point where we can test this thing. Okay. But first, let me save this, because I'm going to show you something. SSI, Squirrel Space Industries, Orbit... Uh, one let's call it that the SSI orbital one that saved that what we haven't considered yet is science if we're going to go all the way up into space you know we really should be getting as much science as we can we're going to get a lot up there and we don't have a materials bay which is a bit of a problem so what we can do is if instead of having this maybe what we can do is have a small fuel tank and science junior bay so we'll get the science bay and we'll get a half size fuel tank that one all right and we'll do that now that will weigh a lot less than the fuel that used to have it less mass means better thrust to weight ratio and all the rest of it however it has decreased our delta v because we've now got less fuel to burn which means that this top section here we're gonna to have to get that bit higher yeah we're gonna have this whole thing's gonna to have to push that higher because it will need the fuel to orbit itself and to deorbit right at the end but that's okay it should be fine he says again it's an experiment this is what Kerbal's great for it's a learning B experimentation and C utter fun we don't want to go up there without some uh, mystery goo now, I'm going to put two mystery goos onto this thing, one on each side like that. And I'm also going to put a, um, what's it gone? a thermometer, right click, unlock, because we can take a temperature reading. So we'll do that. Uh, we don't have a barometer. Now, we do have a communitron. We could, in theory, radio the science back. But we'll get a lot less science if we do it. So what I propose is, when we get into orbit, we get Jeb. We go for a little spacewalk, we grab all the science out of here, because don't forget, we're only bringing that bit back. This is going to be destroyed. 
So what we do then is we grab the science out of here, get back in, deorbit, Jeb comes home with all the science stored safely in here. So we've got the mystery goo, the science bay, and the thermometer th science. That's all the stuff he's going to get. But on the way up, in theory, we should be able to do a mystery goo experiment on the way up, and then another one when we're actually orbiting the planet. That's the theory. We may also be able to get away, in fact, I've just noticed we've got two of those. So I'm just going to drop it back down to one. And then put another one here. We'll take two because they weigh nothing, and hopefully, maybe, we'll get two lots of thermometer checks. Maybe. We'll find out. Have we got enough fuel to get up there? Um, I don't think we have, but I think it's worth a go. Because it's fun to have a go, right? But first, we need to sort out all this staging nonsense. So, we've got three main engines. We know they need to fire. Oh, the other thing we could get now, which we've unlocked, is the... This thing. The Stability Enhancer. Now, you don't have to have one of these, but they are quite useful. So if we click on that, press X to get two of them, that will hold the rocket on the launch pad and it'll it'll detach on launch. So what we want to do is down the bottom here, that's those things, we want to put our three engines in there. So we'll get hold of the solid rocket boosters and we'll drag them down to stage seven. And we'll take the main engine down to stage seven. So this is the primary stage now. When we hit the space bar, they're gonna detach away all the rockets are going to fire and boom we start off we go what's going to happen next the next thing that's going to happen is these solid rocket boosters will run out of fuel they'll detach away so we need that there so we want that stage next we'll put that down here like that that will detach those things away but when they detach we want to deploy these parachutes here and these parachutes here so we'll grab those and we'll put them in the same same stage like that. So when we detach the solid rocket boosters, the parachutes on board also deploy. And hopefully they will then just gently glide back down again. What happens next? Well, what happens next is this decoupler, this, this section here, will run out of fuel. The decoupler will have to be fired. At that point, we want it to fire off with those two parachutes to try and get that back down without exploding. So that's the next stage there. But when we detach that, we want to fire the engine as well, because we need to fly away from it quickly. So we detach and fire the engine at the same time in the same stage. That will then hopefully get itself into orbit. We'll do some science experiments. We will then deorbit, and on the way back down, we will detach ourselves away from this, fall back down, and then parachute safely to the ground. Will it work? Almost certainly it won't. I don't think we have anywhere near enough Delta V, but we need to do a quick test to find out how safe our rocket is. Now we've hit upon our first problem. The vehicle assembly building can't support vessels over 30 parts. How many parts do we have? Well, usefully Kerbal doesn't tell us, but Kerbal Engineer Mod does. If we do this, it will tell us that we have 36 parts. Okay, so we're six parts over. So we have a choice. We can get rid of some parts, or we can upgrade our launch pad. We can get rid of parts by getting rid of things like parachutes, or even science experiments, or even fins, or even these things. But let's go and have a look at how much it costs us to upgrade the launch pad, because it may be worth doing. You have to do it at some point anyway, you have to upgrade these buildings. So if you right click on it, to so upgrade this building is 112,000, if we hover over and back again, we can see the difference is the max vessel weight is 140 tons. If I hover over this thing, we can see that the max parts goes from 30 to 255, but that's 337,000. So, in other words, we've just built a craft here that they can't build. And since it costs 337,000 to actually build it, We've easily answered our question because we've only got 316, which means we're in the game of losing parts. Now, save that. First thing is to get rid of these. Let's see if we can cope with this. Let's just try and put that neatly on the ground. That should, in theory, balance. We're down to 34 parts. 
Get rid of the wings and we'll be fine. I suggest that we get rid of other bits and pieces where possible. We may have to sacrifice some money. Because I think we're going to need this stability, you see. I think this thing is so tall that it, it just will lack the stability. But, you know, the way to find out, it's not hard taking that off and putting it back on again. Now, I think when we click launch, there'll be too much mass for that thing, but we'll find out. There you go. Orbiter's total mass is 26.49 tons. The maximum is 18 tons. Unable to launch. Let's come out. We can upgrade it for 100 grand, and that's worth doing. So if you right-click on that, upgrade it, you see we just built a much bigger launch pad. Go back in, make sure we're all nicely saved, and go for a launch. Now, did it break any staging when we did that? It's important to check. Parachutes. Oh, God. Yep, it looks fine. So, we can actually launch. We're at the part limit. But the weight limit's been moved on. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You know what? I think I might put some struts on here. But I just thought of something serious. Although Jeb can EVA here... I need to go to the space center. Although Jeb can EVA here, he can't... EVA in space without an upgrade to uh, I think this yeah there it is do you see the astronaut complex 112,000 Kerbals uh, on EVA can place flags Kerbals can perform EVAs that is a very important upgrade and we're going to have to take it it's 112,000 but we should get most of that money back anyway we're a bit low on funds now but we should get most of that Back, if I go back to fly. Actually, you know what? I'm going to revert back and strut this thing. I, oh, I don't think we need the struts. Let's just try it. Yeah, so that will allow him... Oh, look at this. The <laughs> We've not done the temperature scan here, so that alerts us. This is it. This is what's so cool about this mod. Is I, I would have thought that I'd done temperature scans here, and I would never look again. But that thing alerts me to the fact that I've not done a temperature scan. It's free science. Yeah, because when we get up there, if we get up there, we're going to need to get this science out of here. And in order to do that, we need to EVA to get out of this thing. And he can't do it unless you upgrade. But now we can upgrade. So let's press T on the SAS. Uh, I'm going to throttle all the way down. And those SRBs should lift us off. There we go. Nice smooth takeoff without any fuel being burned. That's the beauty of the SRB. Normally you would limit the power and just burn some of your fuel, but this is one way of doing it, because these things are so darn powerful, we can get away with saving all of this fuel right now. This thing is just lifting us up completely. And we're saving all of this fuel whilst we're still 1,500 metres up in the atmosphere. Fuels are down here, you can see. I'm going to get ready to throttle up. As long as we don't go over 200 metres, which we have, but we're about to... That's okay. We could actually just tweak those SRBs, spacebar and thrust up. Now I'm going to try and hold my speed uh, at around 200, so I'm just throttling up. There we go. Right, now what happened to those things? They should have had parachutes deployed, so they should in theory not be destroyed and we can recover them later, we'll find out. Okay, holding at 200 here. We're about to break 10k. So we can start to allow that to go over 200. The atmosphere now is thinning out, so we can go faster without pushing against air resistance constantly. So 13. This is quite a tall craft, so I'm going to start my gravity turn now. About here. And you may wonder what a gravity turn is. Yeah, we'll start to full thrust now. A gravity turn, <clears throat> because we're trying to get into orbit, okay, we need to be spinning around the planet. That's what we need to be doing, spinning in that direction. So I'm heading east to start to, if you look, that, that dot there and that dot there are separating from each other, but that's not enough. I'm going to move around like that to sort of 45 degrees. So some of our thrust is being used to lift us up, and some of it is being used to pick up this orbital speed here. These two dots are now getting wider. Instead of it just being a straight up and down, it's now turning into more of an arc. But the arc needs to be bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it's a circle. I'm going to head a bit more east, like that. 
because I want to pick up more orbital speed. I don't know what the fuel's like at the moment. We can't see the staging from this map view. So I'll press M, we'll go back. We're about to run out of fuel now. Okay, cool. Get ready. Space bar. So that 40,000 that went, that's got a chance of making it back down with parachutes. Now we're on the final stage, so if we can't do it with this, then we're toast. I'm going to keep burning to about 75k. We don't need to go more than that. Anything over 70 is fine. In fact, I'm just going to cut it there. Right, okay. World's first speed record of 1,000 meters per second. Fantastic. Right, there's nothing much to be done now, apart from to wait until we get near the Apo. Normally, I would click this and create a maneuver node, which would tell me when I need to start burning more. But we haven't upgraded the uh, tracking station yet, so we can't do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... If you look down here on the nav ball, I'm going to head directly towards the horizon. What that means is I'm heading across the planet's surface, so any thrust I apply now will not lift me up. So I start to thrust up. What it will do it is increase that arc. Okay. Now the, first, the most efficient time to do this is when you get near the peak. I'm just going to cut the thrust there because I'm not close enough. If you start pushing that apple away, then what you're doing is you are getting higher. And you don't want to get higher at this point. So I'm on 75 already. So I'm going to wait till we get a bit nearer. What I also want to do is increase my orbital speed without getting higher. But I don't want to wait till I get there because that will be too late. So let's start thrusting now. Okay, that's good. This is why maneuver nodes are really useful, but we don't have them. We don't have them at the moment. So hopefully, yeah, that's perfect. If we're hovering here and thrusting and we're not overtaking it, that's absolutely bang on. All of our thrust now is pure efficiency. Now what it's doing is it's raising the peri. This is the apo, this is the peak up here, 75k. And you can see the peri is minus 360k, basically. Which means this circle here is inside the planet. So it's like somewhere here and it's coming up like that. And what we want the peri to be is at the same height as the apo to get a purely circular orbit. So all we're doing is accelerating around the planet faster and faster and faster trying to escape the planet's gravity. You can see it coming up now, the Perry's coming up, 150. Minus 100. If we look at it from the top view like that, you'll probably see it a bit easier. Okay, now get ready. Okay, 60k Perry apps. 64, 67, that'll do. Now, that wasn't completely efficient. I should probably have burned a little bit earlier, but it's pretty hard to judge when you've not got a maneuver node to go from. So what we need to do now is I need to basically get this higher. And you can't get this higher, all right, without affecting this one, unless you wait until you get round there. Because if I start thrusting now, I will change the height of this thing. What I need to do is accelerate time, go around to this apo, which is already now at 83, and then raise that up to 83. So if I press speed up, which is up here, see the top left there? That will start to time warp faster and faster. The other way of doing it is to use the comma and full stop keys, which are the left and right chevrons. So the right chevron, which is the full stop, will speed up time. And the left chevron will slow it down. Now, unfortunately, because I'm not quite at 70k yet, I can't accelerate more than four times. The way that the Kerbal physics works is that you need to be over 70k before it will let you fully accelerate because the atmosphere is still there up to 70k. And what it does is above 70k, it just ignores all the atmospheric calculations. So up until that point, it says to you, nope, you can't go faster than four times because I can't calculate atmospheric physics up to that point. So we'll just have to put up with it, I'm afraid. Once we get around here, though, we'll be fine. So while we're here, why don't we learn some stuff? If we can see what we're doing. It's a bit hard. Um, but basically, we are now heading in this direction, okay? Turn off SAS with T. Basically, you can see that we're heading 
for into the screen yeah into the screen is where we're going and if I maneuver around like this you can see that I am now pointing prograde like that prograde means you're pointing in the direction that you're heading which is what we're doing now we are heading in that direction and we are now pointing in that direction so if I thrust at this point I will pick up speed relative to this planet and try and escape it the alternative is to flip the other way this is retrograde okay this is where your nose is pointing back where you came from and thrust is pointing towards where you're going if I thrust now I will slow myself down I will slow the orbital speed down and this is how you deorbit so when I'm ready to come back down this is what I would or burn and when I burn it will collapse it will collapse this circle on the other side it will have the opposite of what we're trying to do that's how we're going to get back so that's prograde and that's retrograde I need to be pointing pro so I'm going to point back around towards prograde the retrograde symbol it's not very clear to be honest on the nav ball the retrograde symbol has like an X through it and the lines on the outside are arranged in a triangle whereas on the prograde if you can see there they're arranged like a horizon and a tick plenty of science going on here we might as well grab some of it temperature scan we'll collect that might as well if we go back to the map view you can see that we're getting around here once we get here we're going to bring that up and it'll be absolutely fine we can then do our experiments we don't even need to do this the only reason that we're orbiting properly is because we have a contract to do so if I just move that out of the way so many windows now <laughs> okay escape the atmosphere that was achieved uh, the speed record that was achieved orbit curbing is not achieved the reason this is not achieved is because that has to be over 70k the apple and the peri must be over 70k and we haven't done that yet but we have got the altitude thing going speed record of two and a half thousand meters per second we're doing 2280 so we there is another achievement here which you know I don't think we're gonna get unless we start well maybe when we get up here we'll see what our speeds like our speed is going to be quickest at the Perry, funnily enough, when we're our low point. In fact, you know what? Let's just do a bit of let's just do a bit of observation. So we'll do the now oh, we can see what we're doing. We'll do the mystery goo. So that gets us nine signs. The goo appears to have dumped, clumped into a sphere. It also appears to become brittle. We'll take that. That's open just one of them. Remember, if we happen to land on a different biome, right? We'll get to open the other goo as well. So that's worth doing. Crew report, um, four and a half signs. Crew report while in space near Kerbin. We'll keep that. Material study, 22 and a half signs. Very nice. We won't take the EVA just yet, I'll tell you why, because we're approaching this. So, on the nav ball, we're going to point prograde like that. So again, we're now pointing towards the direction we're going. Come on, Jeb. Steer the craft, sir. Almost at the Apo. Almost ready to do this. As I say, if you don't burn exactly at the Apo, then you will increase it when you burn right. Point towards prograde, and we shall start to burn gently. And you'll see that come up. Look at that. You see the speed that comes up? Very quickly this moves away, so you have to be careful. I think Jeb's getting excited. <laughs> Wait till we get to the apple again. And then we'll burn. A little bit of burn. That is over 70k, which means we should be in orbit. There you go, see it? Top right. Orbit achieved. The science thing is going crazy. We don't need to go any higher, that's perfectly fine. We'll just leave it there, to be honest. But if I accelerate time now, you'll see we can go... We can go all the way up to, what's that, 50 times, but we can't go higher until we get to 120 kilometers in orbit. But even at 50 times, you know, it's quite a lot. Okay, let's get our experiments done and try and get back without crashing. Uh, science experiments, EVA reports. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to... 
point the rocket that way just because it'll make it easier to see a little bit what's going on EVA reports that will EVA Jeb he's now he's now outside and you can see the rockets turning because there's nobody to stability assist it which is going to be a bit annoying uh, if I right click on him and do an EVA report he gets 7.2 signs to record your observation around the situation take that now the question is can we move him down like this and grab that data no nope, he's already let go so press R for RCS and this is where it gets funny because you've got to basically learn how to do this now WASD and then left control and left shift will move you up and down if we can collect that data from there remove the data from the science bay now if you're doing this just be gentle gentle taps because you'll find yourself losing your astronaut if you're not careful but left will go sorry D will go right like that right click collect data remove data and then shift will go up and one of these thermometers has been used we've just got to work out which it is you see what I mean it's easy to start finding yourself all over the place particularly when the rockets actually spinning so just gentle taps like that. now hopefully it's that one take the data there we go cool so all you gotta do now is get back inside after Jeb's had his little spacewalk Oops. not that one he's so happy I was hoping to just t turn the HUD off a second and get a nice little screeny of Jeb. The last time I did this, um, it was... <laughs> look at his face! Ah, his face is a picture. The last time I did this, there was a, an absolutely an eclipse of the, of the uh, sun over the Kerbal. Beautiful timing. Right, if we get near this, we should get an F to grab. That's what we're looking for. F to grab, there you go. And then you'll see a B to board. If you don't, just move towards the top like that. Then he gets back in, and it's all safe once more. So what we did was we grabbed all the data back from here. Now there is, going to this, EVA report, which is complete nonsense, because we've got all the data. However, if we take that data and store it again, then maybe we can get another EVA report, 7.2 science. He might get away with that. Maybe. Okay, it's not to worry. Let's go around the other side a bit. I'm going to accelerate time. You can see up there, top left. Now this is where we need to collapse our orbit. Now I'd like to basically land. Where would I like to land? How? If we can land at the desert, that would be quite cool. So if the desert's here, like that, I'm going to basically try and put our craft on the opposite side of the desert. Because I reckon the desert would be a new, new biome. And maybe he can nab some more data from it. He won't have any scientific equipment unfortunately, but maybe he can do an EVA report and sneak some more signs. So, what I'm going to do is going to point if you remember, I'm going to point retro, which is the uh, the triangle with the, the X through it like this. Point that, press T for SAS just to lock it on. That will use Jeb's piloting ability and we'll start to thrust. And when we thrust we'll see this collapse, you see? Very quickly it starts to come down on the other side. You see up there the periaps height is coming down. We're doing the opposite to what we did before. We are collapsing the orbit. What I'm aiming for is I'm trying to get the peri. Now where is it at now? Okay, I'm just going to kill it there for a second. That's the periaps height of 35. I'm going to do a little bit more. If we can bring it down to about, there you go, under 30. So what's going to happen is he's going to come flying along here and as he gets down, he's going to start hitting the atmosphere. And if you go for a long, slow atmospheric burn, that's a good thing, okay? Anything under about 30k will get you a long, slow atmospheric burn. If you try to head down too quickly, you risk, there's a real risk that you'll just explode the rocket because you'll hit that much atmosphere that quickly it'll get so hot that even the heat shield can't protect you so acc accelerate time once we get under um, 
There we go. Once we get under 70k, it will just slow us down to up to times 4. Because now it has to do physics calculations and stuff. There's only one thing left, and that is to detach, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point prograde and hit the space bar. So we've got a bit of fuel left. We actually took too much fuel with us. We could, in theory, possibly get away with half of that fuel. Oh, no, we couldn't. It's about the best we could have got, to be honest. Right. Okay, Jeb, space bar. Boom. Now we just need to spin this around. Slow time down. If you don't slow time down, that's what happens. Everything happens at crazy speeds. Okay, so there we go. Retrograde, which means we're pointing in the direction we're heading. That's going to make sure the heat shield hits the atmosphere, not us. So there are two reasons why that's shaped like that. One of them is because on takeoff, it's more aerodynamically efficient. And secondly, when you come back in, all the heat won't affect the top here. It'll just blow around it. Things are not done by accident. Right, you should start to see now, he's at 45, you should start to see him hit the atmosphere. Once he gets under 40. Now, where are we going to land? That's the question. Now, I'm aiming for the desert, but you can see the, the air friction is going to bring it right back. So, we're not going to hit the desert, unfortunately. We're going to be back here somewhere in that crater, possibly. There you go. Let me just turn the acceleration down so we can straighten up properly. Now, if we press C. We can sit inside and see what Jeb can see. Okay. There's his little arms. And you can see what's going on outside. It's pretty crazy. But he should be fine. You can see the surface speed coming down now. The atmosphere is slowing us down. That's the friction. That's the heat. But the net effect is it slows us down. Just keep that thing pointed towards the retro like that. It will move because you're slowing down basically. So keep pressing the S key and keep that lined up. It's telling us we've got science crew report. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to EVA at this point. Right, once the fireball stops, it gets under 1,000 meters per second. Basically, that means you've slowed down enough now. So anything about four to 5,000, you can deploy the parachutes. You can even control at what point they altitude they deploy fully, you see, 500. So I'm going to turn the acceleration down a second. Press the space bar. That opens the parachute but doesn't deploy it fully. Yeah, he's landed in the sea. It's okay. That's fine. We've got enough science out of this. Accelerate time a bit. There we go. And it's deployed. Safely back down. Successful mission. Jeb looks reasonably happy, or I think he'd rather be back in space, to be honest. Hopefully we'll get some decent money and science back for this. Another good thing about landing in sea is it cools the craft down very, very, very quickly, so they can come and rescue you a lot quicker. Like the Challenger and stuff, they used to have to sit on that runway for well over an hour just to cool down. That's how hot it got. Uh, no signs here, so we're just going to recover now. So we click recover vessel. So, successful mission. We got all our signs back. Uh, if you have a look here, we've got 61,000 for orbiting Kerbin. We set an altitude record of 70 kilometers, 66,000 for that. Escape the atmosphere, we did that, 44,000. And set a speed record, 25,000. So basically, we've gone back up to 273,000. And don't forget, we upgraded the launch pad, and we upgraded the astronaut complex, and we've still got 25 science left, so if we go into here, we've now got more science to spend, 25, unfortunately we need 45 for any of these, but I don't think we're going to need any of these for a little while yet, because what we need is some more contracts. We now have lots of stuff unlocked, even flying to the moon. 
However, that was a very long episode. That is definitely the episode, end of this episode. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave me a comment to let you know what you think. Um, whether you're learning anything, whether it's going at the right pace, whether it's too complicated. What do you think about this? Are we learning stuff? Do you like the game yet? There's a lot more to it. A lot more to do. There's wonderful places to go yet. Anyway, that's it from me. Take care, guys, and happy flying.